Hello everyone, so a day late, but I finally finished watching Westworld Season 4. So when it came to the first season of Westworld, I was obsessed with it. I've watched it quite a few times and I just absolutely loved it. Just such a great arc. The second season, I can get why a lot of people don't like it, but I found it was a lot of the same, but still really enjoyed it, had my fun with it. Wasn't the biggest fan of season three, so if I wasn't the biggest fan, I, I didn't like it really at all. So I was a little nervous coming into this season, but this season is eight episodes long. Each one's about like 55 minutes long, so they're longer episodes. But of course, the events take place about eight years after where season three left off. So there's a bit of a time jump that they do, and I found that there is a decent amount of explaining that they did handle decently well for the most part. But without further ado, let me get some my review for season four of Westworld, which you'll be able to find on both HBO, Crave, HBO Max, where um, depending on where you are in the world, but I was able to watch this on Crave. So yes, let's get into it. So there is lots of different storylines that happen within this season. There's a new park, which is basically 1930s, 1940s New York City, which I found was really, really cool. There is Aaron Paul's character. So Caleb teaming up with Maeve once again, realizing that the war that happened in season three might not be over. And there is a mysterious player who is hunting basically everyone who is involved in, again, just the massacres that happened in season three. We have a very convoluted plot going on with William and extremely convoluted plots going on with Bernard and his taking on of a journey. I found there's um, some timelines in this that's, again, I did find that they wove it very, very well, but a lot of the time I found it was kind of hard. I don't, I don't think they explained it the best in terms of exactly the timeline of everything going on here not intersected. There's like time jumps within time jumps that I found again. The pacing of it was decent. The reveal was decent, but I found just a lot of the build up and even just some of the explaining wasn't quite as there as it needed to be to kind of let the viewers in on what's happening and when it's happening sort of thing. I did find that this season went a little more to the roots of, again, just these twists and turns storytelling of not exactly knowing what's going on when and where and to who and who is who they kind of went back to again just what made it so much fun to watch the first two seasons where you're just wondering again apps like you're getting your mind blown in a lot of ways where just things are intersecting in ways that you definitely weren't expecting them to but have it make sense because again it's just a brilliant storytelling that they had i found a lot of the really good writing that i was enjoying is within this season. It's a little slow to get onto its feet, but I found by episode three, it started to get very interesting. And then the middle of this, so episodes like five, six, and seven, were definitely where the show was at its best. And I was having just, again, a ton of fun watching it. Um, four, five, four, five, six, I think are the strongest points of this. So again, the halfway points. And there is, again, just absolutely amazing acting by everyone who's in this. Jeffrey Wright, Aaron Paul, Tessa Thompson has a very big role this season where, again, too, just her version of Dolores is absolutely terrifying and she brings a lot of presence to the screen. I found that um, the fight and action sequences in this season where um, I was really let down by a lot of what happened in season three for the action sequences, but I found they stepped it up quite a bit. Um, one of my biggest problems with season three was again, just having this big, almost like citywide war that we didn't really get to see a whole lot of. It just basically completely separated our protagonists and antagonists in very barren places where they were just duking it out with each other and we were just left to believe that these areas wouldn't be populated, that nothing's happening here. I found it was just a little weird. That does happen a few times during this season, but I found it in ways that made a little bit more sense for it to play out this way. But there are giant scenes with, again, just lots of people and lots of <laughs> lots of death and just individual stories that take place within it. I found, again, especially with Dolores' character, there is a very, very great sense of again just to the world and the worlds not being exactly what we think they are operating in the way that people think they have agency but the show has really gone to show that agency is something that's very very tough to come by in a world that we live in where so much is controlled and just a lot of people don't realize that even though they think they have freedom they're being owned by something else. And they do go into some really great socio-political commentary that I found was a lot just better written, better illustrated, and better acted, better shown. And again, just a lot of ways 
better dissected than season three. Um, what season three tried to go for, I found Jake just came off a little too generic kind of worker versus poor thing that was just a very easy story. But I found this went more into the roots of all of it and what it means to be alive, what it means to be a slave, what it means to control or be controlled. I found there was just a lot better commentary this season around it. It was something a lot more interesting to watch and listen to. And again, to all of our characters have a different idea of what these things mean and having their ideas clash just felt a lot more right. Even though the pacing of this season wasn't always the greatest and a lot of it felt really dragged out or again, to ways that just weren't explained too, too well in terms of the setting. I did find that everything was pretty solid. All the characters are decent for the most part. Again, just some events I found needed a lot more explaining to do. Some of it felt a little too unreal or they're just making the characters a little too OP to keep it in lame terms where they're just, they felt really overpowered in their abilities just for the sake of plot armor, for the sake of pushing the story forward in ways that again, just too didn't really explain the story or what was going on. So I found its fullest potential, but Again, too, this was such, even though it's not saying much, in my opinion, this was such a step up from the previous season. I still don't think it's on par with what seasons one and two of Westworld did, but it brought me back into, again, really enjoying watching the show, watching the world. It's a very, very cool world, and I love the way, again, that they just go into explaining agency and freedom and again to what we thought was free isn't free at all I really like the middle parts it's slow to get to the start it's one that's in the middle i found that's when the season was at its best i don't want to say it falls apart at the end but it definitely slows back down in the end and kind of sets up for a season five that i don't know what they're gonna do nothing seems really clear right now who's alive who's gonna come back kind of all these things um i know a lot of people me myself included are kind of tired of watching these characters die to learn that there's another clone of them out there different personality things like that i mean it's great for the actors because they're absolutely kill it <laughs> they're so good within it and um just the way that they're directed cinematography is great landscapes are amazing um i wish we would have spent a little more time of course too in that 1940s park because um i can't see the parks are just so interesting but they kind of played it off in a way that it's just oh it's another park that's the exact same thing i want them to do a little bit more in terms of that. I mean, they played a little bit with, again, just the city that they're in, but I find that there's just a lot more story for them to go into and to delve in that I hope they do in the future seasons. Again, just with the way that they set things up or ended things in season four, I don't know what they're gonna do. Nothing seems really clear right now, but we'll just have to wait and see what they do. So with everything taken together, I'm gonna have to give Westworld season four a seven out of 10. Again, a major step up from what season three did. Still not on par with what the other seasons did, but. If you've been enjoying Westworld, I do think that this is definitely a step up. If you're a little cautious about going into season four because you didn't like season three like me, I do think this was a good season. It's solid. Could have been a little bit more, but I found it kind of got the series back on track after losing a lot of steam and a lot of focus, it seemed like, with season three. So if you've seen season four of Westworld, please let me know your thoughts on it in the comments down below. And of course, if you like this review, definitely give it a thumbs up and you can check out everything I do on this channel through a playlist down below and I'll link some up top here for convenience sake. In the description of this video on my channel bio, you'll find a link to the Media Mountain and that is my Discord where we talk about movies, video games, comic books, TV, pretty much everything that's awesome in this world. So you can definitely join that amazing community, help make it even more amazing than it is already. And yeah, just just awesome guys sky blue eyes i see a world behind them no more time sinking into the side